Well, New York City's shootings hit the highest level in 15 years last year. With a string of high-profile crimes early this year, President Joe Biden came to New York City. This was to meet with the NYPD and Mayor Eric Adams to stop the violence. Our next guest says it was all talk. He missed a major factor contributing to New York City's spike in crime. He says it's bail reform law. Joining us right now, the president of the Detectives Endowment Association, Paul Giacomo. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York. Good morning, Rosanna. Good, good morning, Bianca. So Great to be back. I, I know they talked about not defunding the police. Was there any mention about bail reform during that conversation with the president, the governor, and the mayor? No, there was not. But, uh, you know, the police commissioner, the, uh, the mayor of New York City, uh, do believe, as we do, that the bail reform is not working. There's a direct correlation uh, from when bail reform was started two years ago, and we told the legislator it wasn't going to work, to the uptick in gun violence and violence in New York City. So, you know, a few weeks ago, you asked the governor to actually remove or replace uh, the district attorney in Manhattan, Alvin Bragg. Do you still feel that way? Because it seems like Mr. Bragg has a different policy right now. I think it's all smoke and mirrors. We do need an oversight. We do need a special prosecutor to come in and make sure he's prosecuting the crimes that should be prosecuted. Uh, he's still having, a, he still did not address the resisting arrest or obstructing governmental administration. And the only reason he did that, uh, Rosanna, is because these two young officers were executed. And he, uh, his plan blew up in his face. Uh, I think it's smoke and mirrors. Only time will tell. Action speaks louder than words, so we'll see what happens moving forward. Yeah, well, talking about those actions speaking louder than words, the actions of, you know, criminals that have these guns and shoot people, can you give us a bit of a number or just a bigger picture of how many of them are, are let back out after doing that? Is there a percentage you have maybe? Well, uh, the shootings are up about 33%, but the amount of people that are locked up with firearms, uh, 80 to 90% of them are being released. I mean, those are incredible numbers, and I don't know if that's fully communicated to the public, especially when you have you know, situations going on like this right now. What about shoplifting? Because I know we can talk about guns a lot, and that's what President Biden came here to do, but shoplifting also very highly increased. But it, I don't even know if you call it shoplifting more. It's more like curbside pickup because no exactly. one's trying to conceal this. Exactly. You know, and you have to uh, enforce those crimes. There's a penal law. The state laws have to be enforced, whether how small or how big. You need law and order in the city of New York. You cannot just have individuals walking into any store and taking whatever they want, because eventually it's going to move into office space and into commercial buildings, and eventually it's going to go into res residential buildings. And they will walk in and take whatever they want with the people of the city in danger. How do we get to this place where we're talking about smash and grabs and, and, and robberies and stores that are okayed? I mean, when, when, when you start to see it on a regular basis, you know you're in trouble in New York City. How did we get to this place? Well, it started under the prior administration under Mayor de Blasio. Uh, it gave that hands-off, you know, policy to the police with the, with the criminals and the, uh, the city council and also in Albany, the Senate and the Assembly. You know, they have an obligation to keep the people of the city and the state safe, and they're not doing it. And they have to change these laws to protect the good law-abiding citizens of this city. And let's talk about the, the victims a little bit. No one's talking about the, the victims that are being shot, the young children. Yesterday, they had a, a bus shot up in, uh, in, in Harlem. Uh, you know, eventually, more people are going to die. More people are going to get hurt. When are they going to take action? We're doing our jobs. Detectives are making the arrest, investigating these cases. Our politicians are not doing theirs. So you talked about the prior administration, Mayor de Blasio. He was the one who actually disbanded the anti uh, plain, plain, what was it? The plain clothes unit detectives, right? Yes. And and yes. did that hurt your crime fighting capabilities? Well, I think it's a, you know a, a bit of everything. It did did have an effect on, on on hurting crime because he didn't back the police. You know, when he first got into office. You have to remember, his policies uh, contributed to the death of uh, Detectives Ramos and Lou. And now here we are again, and we got, the, you know, detectives or police officers uh, Rivera and Mora. You know, uh, it's, it's the same story. We knew this was going to happen. We just didn't know when and where.
And because of it, two young hero police officers lost their lives. So what are you suggesting? What, is Governor Hochul listening to you? Is Albany listening to you? Because it seems like it's, you got to go to the head to like get this stopped. Well, I have called out the governor to take some action and take control. Either go one way, don't support the bail fan, uh, reform, or, or come on outside and give it a try. You know, you have to you have to fix the bail reform to give judges discretion to keep dangerous felons in jail. The discovery law, you have to protect the complainants and the witnesses, and the raise the age. Most of these kids are 14, 15 years old. They're committing these shootings. And if you're caught with an illegal firearm, you have to do a certain amount of time in jail, a mandatory minimum if you're caught with an illegal firearm, and violence will drop, I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. All right. President of the DEA, Paul DiGiacomo, thank you so much for being with us on Good Day New York. My pleasure, and thank you for your support. Thank you.